Namaste. I'm Ala Melu and our cooking theme today is Home for Dinner. Cooking and enjoying delicious foods with family is an experience we can cherish. There is nothing like coming home for dinner. Today, we will prepare meals that will ensure everyone is home for dinner. Our menu includes fish cooked in a thick, aromatic ginger garlic sauce, a savory broccoli stir fry, and an exquisite coconut rice with cashews. Are you ready? Let's get started. Now we will prepare fish and ginger garlic sauce. Fish and ginger garlic sauce is our family favorite. Most type of fish lend themselves beautifully to Indian spices. Here, as you will see, the flavors of garlic, chili, ginger, and a range of spices make the fish in a sauce that is irresistible. Here are our ingredients. I'll be using a couple of tablespoons of oil. I have half a teaspoon fennel seeds, half a teaspoon cumin, half a teaspoon ground turmeric, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, one teaspoon ground cumin, half a teaspoon garam masala, half a teaspoon black pepper and cumin powder, quarter teaspoon salt, and I have about two to three curry leaves. And the fresh ingredients are half a cup chopped onion, quarter cup chopped tomato, six garlic cloves quartered, half green chili pepper chopped, two tablespoon grated fresh ginger, one cup tomato sauce, about half a cup of warm water, and we have a about a pound of boneless, skinless fish fillet cut into pieces, and I have one tablespoon cilantro. I'm going to add some oil. Uh, the oil that I'm using is really canola. And I went to the Indian grocery store and I got the curry leaves. So if you have curry leaves, fine. If you don't have the curry leaves, forget it. That's okay too. But curry leaves adds a wonderful flavor. Now I'm going to add all the spices one by one. Fennel, cumin, and then I'm going to let the seeds brown. Okay, and I could smell the curry leaves. It's so wonderful. Um, so when we finish doing the spices that's getting brown, we'll add the onion. Once when we set up all these ingredients, it goes very quickly. You won't believe how quickly we can fix this dish. And, uh, oh my goodness, with the curry leaves, cumin and fennel, the aroma is so good, even before adding any of these spices. Today, for this preparation, I went to the market and I got only the fish, onions, tomatoes, garlic, and ginger. The rest was already in my spice pantry. So when we have all these spices readily available and spices have long shelf life, you know what? You could just go and get yourself uh, some spices, set it up like I have, and then... Um, cook the food and now I'm adding ground cumin. See, once when you set up, see how quickly it goes. Then now uh, I'm going to add the garam masala. Garam masala is a very unique spice and uh, it's, the flavor and the aroma is absolutely wonderful. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add the tomato sauce. And the tomato sauce gives a nice, nice rich taste. And I'll do the tomato sauce. And uh, if you want uh, more sauce, you could use more tomato sauce than it's indicated in the recipe, okay? So we let all of them uh, come together and we will add the salt. We will add the ground, ground black pepper and cumin. This is the only spice that I use in my um, only spice that I grind at home. The rest, I just go to the store and buy the spices. So uh, the cooking goes very fast and I'm going to use the tomatoes. I'm gonna to cook everything together now. Uh, and I'm gonna to add the garlic. 
and the green chili. Okay, you can add the green chili, but if you are um, not particular about the green chili, let it go, okay? So I'm going to, I, I think it will add a nice um, spicy taste to the fish. Um, and then I'm going to add the ginger too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this with, I'm going to add some water. And I'm going to close it and let all of these ingredients cook together. And I'm going to increase the heat a bit, and I'm going to close it. You can really use any firm fish, such as tilapia, cod, halibut, haddock, catfish, or whitefish. And it's so good. And I'm going to take the tilapia, because the sauce is beginning to boil, and it looks like all of them are cooking together very nicely. So I'm going to drop it. When you go to buy the fish, uh, you can get it from the seafood store if you are close to a seafood store. Otherwise, go to the reputable grocery store. And in the fish department, I will advise you to buy the fish uh, from the displayed case. And you know, the uh, people in the gr uh, grocery store, in the fish department, are very helpful. Ask them to remove the skin if you like. Um, they are very, very helpful. And in India, where I grew up, I, I came from Madras, and uh, now it's known as Chennai. And in Chennai, we have a beach called Marina Beach. And it is an amazing sight in the evening. You should see the fishermen bringing all this wonderful fresh seafood and people standing waiting to get the fresh caught fish or crab or shrimp or whatever. And, um, uh, bargaining and trying to buy. It's an amazing, wonderful sight. Ooh, that looks good. See, fish doesn't take very long to cook. And especially fish like tilapia and all that, you just put the uh, spices and make a nice thick sauce and uh, um, put the tomato sauce and all these things and ginger. I could smell the ginger and you just leave it like that and it gets cooked very quickly and I can see that and we will leave it like that and I'm going to add the chopped cilantro too because the cilantro gives an amazing taste to the fish. So if you want to serve your fish in a sauce, you can even prepare it in the morning and leave it, um, you know, and just warm it up during dinner time and serve it. It doesn't have to be prepared just before dinner. And there you have it, fish in a ginger garlic sauce. Hi, here we are in West Dallas Farmer's Market in West Dallas, Wisconsin. It is so exciting to go into Farmer's Market to see what vegetables we have in there. We will pick some wonderful vegetables and cook some delicious vegetables that are easy to prepare. Let's go in and check out what we have there. Hi, look at all these tomatoes and garlic. Look at this beautiful garlic. For being so small, garlic has earned its great reputation. It, the garlic always brings out the bold uh, culinary experience. And when you're cooking, it turns the ordinary meal into an extraordinary meal. The head of the garlic is so tight and it has a thin paper skin. And here we have some garlic cloves. Once when the garlic cloves come comes apart, we really need to cook them right away. If we leave the car garlic cloves separately, it will perish quickly. So it's beautiful to have the garlic 
like that in the room temperature. And then of course we have the wide variety of tomatoes, the red ripe tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, green tomatoes. And do you know that tomato is a fruit and not a vegetable? Although we use tomato as a vegetable in salads and in cooking. Um, when, when we buy the tomatoes, we want to store it in the room temperature. Uh, gar tomatoes and garlic are great en enhancers to any dish and we can create magic with these two. Now we will prepare broccoli with red onion and ginger. The savory broccoli stir fry is rich in flavor and nutrition. It can be paired with rice and makes an excellent side dish to any meal. Here are our ingredients. I'll be using about a teaspoon of oil. Spices, I have half a teaspoon cumin seeds, half a teaspoon black mustard seeds, about quarter teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon garam masala, half uh, fresh green chili chopped, one teaspoon grated fresh ginger, one third cup chopped yellow onion, and I have one third cup chopped red onion, four cups chopped broccoli, one tablespoon grated fresh coconut. Here I have the broccoli that is already washed in the cold water and they're cut into small florets, including the stems. We want to choose broccoli that are compact like this and dark green with firm stems, okay? Sometimes the broccoli has a longer stem and I try to uh, remove the uh, tough part of the stem and I decide to have it like that. And I find florets are easier for me to chop up like that too. Uh, it doesn't matter, I can take it like this or this. And let me show you how I cut the uh, broccoli into like that. Just. I just enjoy a good music and then I just chop it. There is no right or wrong way. Just, you know, when the vegetables are cut small like this, it's very appealing. Just add some oil to saute your spices. Now my oil is getting hot. So I'm going to put the black mustard seeds and I'm going to let the black mustard seeds pop. And as you can see, it's popping. When the oil is hot but not smoking, we will add the black mustard seeds. See, this, this kind of um, technique is called tempering. See how often we do the tempering with different, different spices? So it's so easy to get to this kind of cooking without uh, too much difficulty. And uh, now I'm going to saute the onions. This is just yellow cooking onions. And I'm going to saute the onions. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the broccoli and I'm going to add them. And since the broccoli is cut into small uh, pieces like this, it will cook very quickly and there is no need for uh, steaming and no need for boiling. You just have a healthy saute. And when you're doing that also what you do is you add the garam masala because the broccoli on its own is a high fibrous vegetable and you need some taste to it. That's why I'm adding some garam masala, green chili. Green chili is my favorite and ginger. All of this, the green chili and the ginger together add an amazing taste and I'm adding some salt to it, okay? I put everything together here and now I'm going to stir this, okay? And uh, since the broccoli is cut into small pieces, uh, it cooks very quickly. And this is our favorite. Sometimes I like to cook more than four cups using the same method. And it's also high fibrous and uh, very healthy for you. And I can see the broccoli getting soft. And I'm going to, sometimes you can also cover this for a few minutes, uh, but you see how it has wilted already. So there is no need for anything. And I like to cook the broccoli uh, crisp tender, not mushy. If we cook it too much, it becomes mushy and it's not appealing. And now 
I think it's cooking really well. I'm going to add some fresh coconut. Fresh shredded coconut is available in the freezer, okay? And um, just I'm going to add it. So see, the coconut and the ginger and a little bit of green chili, all of this adds a great taste to the broccoli dish. We assemble the ingredients, we put them together, and that's it, it's done. And then I like to use the red onions for the color. See that? I love red onions because it gives a nice crunchy taste. Okay, so I'm going to do that and see how quick and easy it is. Just make your big chicken or fish or whatever and make the broccoli like this. It is so easy to prepare, only like about within 10 minutes and you have all your spice ingredients in the cupboard, so it's no big deal. So we can cook all these cruciferous amazing vegetables and serve it to our family and they would really enjoy uh, having this kind of dish. So there you have it. Now we will prepare coconut rice with cashews. Coconut rice with cashews is an exquisite rice dish. Very easy to prepare and is delicious. Here are our ingredients. I half a teaspoon of asafoetida, two dried red chili pepper, two to three curry leaves optional, one teaspoon black mustard seeds, one teaspoon wura dal, about half a teaspoon salt, one cup cooked uh, pasmati rice, one cup shredded fresh coconut. I'll be using about two tablespoons oil and I have quarter cup of whole roasted cashews and quarter cup of chopped fresh coriander. Before cooking, I want to talk about the coconut. See, this is how the coconut looks. When you buy a coconut, what you want to do is shake, shake, shake. And when you shake, if there is a lot of water in it, that means it's going to be a good coconut, okay? And uh, here, what we do is we take the coconut, we take the hammer, and we cut it in, we, we just cut it in half, and then when we do it, this is how the coconut looks. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, when before it is shredded, well, they will have the coconut like this. They'll have the coconut like this and they will peel off uh, the hard shell behind it and they will shred it like this. And when you crack the coconut, you get the coconut water. And the coconut water is just like that, very clear. And it's a very hydrating fluid. And uh, so I'm going to take this coconut and I'm going to roast this coconut, okay? Just to make it nice and brown. Not too much brown, just to get that water out and to roast it. And I think, um, all of you know how to cook the rice, but anyway, uh, this is the pasmati rice, okay? When it's roasting, I'll tell you about it. Well, the best way to cook the rice is with a rice cooker. I love my rice cooker. It's automatic. You just add one cup of rice, depending upon what rice you're using. Uh, and here, for pasmati rice, what I did was I took the raw pasmati rice and I soaked it in the cold water for a while. And then I drained the water. I I put it in the rice cooker, the drained, um, soaked rice with two cups of water, and I just turned on my rice cooker, and within 20 minutes, the rice is done. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It's not clumping, and it's very, very nice and grainy here. But here I am just roasting the coconut, and I'm just going to touch it to see how warm it is. It's getting there. So what's the purpose of roasting the coconut? It take, it removes the water content from the coconut and it keeps it nice and dry and it looks pretty good to me. For making coconut rice you want fresh coconut and this is a very um, it's an exquisite delicate rice. So that 
Coconut is roasted, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another skillet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some oil because we need oil to saute our spices. Okay, I'm, I'm just heated the skillet, added the oil, and the oil is hot, but not smoking, so I'm going to add more curry leaves to it. And see how it splatters. Again, if you don't have curry leaves, it's quite all right. You could still make this rice dish. And um, after I use the curry leaves, I'm going to put the black mustard seeds, and then the wurad dal. And uh, you may ask, what is wurad dal? Wurad dal is a lentil. When it is whole, it has a black skin around it. But what I have here is a lentil that is skinned and split. And when you add black mustard seeds and wurad dal, it gives a nice, nutty, crunchy-like taste. And I'm going to drop two red peppers in here too. You want to add the whole pepper in it because if you break that pepper and you put it, everyone in the home will be sneezing. We don't want that. So <laughs> just put the red pepper whole because when the red pepper is infused in oil, it gives a great taste. And this is asafoetida. Asafoetida is an amazing spice. Uh, it's already available like uh, um, uh, pebbles or powdered. So it's brown. Now I'm going to add the rice. Okay, and I am going to mix it up. I'm going to add the salt. See, because I used the curry leaves and the mustard seeds and wood, it is so tasty. Now, let's say you had more rice than what I'm showing here. You could use more rice, okay? Uh, just because I said one or one and a half cups, it doesn't matter that you have to go with that. If I have a little bit more cooked rice, I use that. So now I'm going to add the coconut to it. And we'll mix them up together. Holy cow, this, this rice and the coconut is so amazing. It's really flavorful. I can smell the asafoetida, the curry leaves all coming together. And then I'm going to add the nuts. Okay, we are always told to snack on nuts. <laughs> and I love using nuts when I cook the rice because it gives a wholesome taste, okay? So I add the nuts. And I know when I worked with my registered dietitian friend, Margaret, she will say sometimes, let's use the walnuts or peanuts. So, but if you're allergic to any of these nuts, forget about the nuts, okay? I want you to be safe. Now. With the, after we added all of this, we just add some cilantro. If you, if you like cilantro, fine, use it. And if you want it just right, you can do that too. So there you have it, amazing coconut rice with cashews. It looks heavenly and exquisite. And I can wait to serve this with the broccoli dish and the a fish that we cooked in an aromatic sauce. There you have it, coconut rice. I hope you enjoyed our time together today as we prepared three dishes with fish, broccoli, and delicious coconut rice with cashews. Taking time to cook and connecting with family around the dinner table is a rewarding experience. Cooking is love and will keep family warm and happy. So long for now, until next time, with love from my kitchen to yours. Vanakkam. To order copies of Alamelu's cookbooks, including recipes from this series or the DVD set of this cooking series, visit mptv.org and click on Store. All prices include shipping and handling. For more information about healthful Indian flavors with Alamelu, log on to mptv.org or find us on Facebook at Healthful Indian Flavors with Alamelu.